Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about nuclear ion propulsion. So let's dive right into it. Now first, we have to understand what exactly is the problem that we are looking into nuclear system. So problem is that we need better technology for space travel. What do we have right now is basically inherently designed for low earth orbit. Everything we built is more or less for low earth orbit, be it Falcon 9, be it space shuttle, is inherently designed for low earth orbit. Now moon, we can go. Even though moon is only a few light seconds away or 1.8 light seconds away, uh, we can go there. It is within our capacity, to, that's how Saturn V did it. However, Mars is a big as maybe simply means uh, can we do that on paper absolutely is that can we actually build a spacecraft within a budget that is like you know big enough uh, and uh, can handle a crew for long enough as in like you are talking about uh, crew shielding food all the provisions for around one year or two years or even six months can we do that so that's a maybe on paper it can be done it's just that can we actually do that so it's like you know physics is not stopping us it's like our engineering is like bro we can't do this and our budget is like hell no so that is one thing you have to understand every single technology that we utilize right now in rocketry it's for low earth orbit then another aspect is is that what if we want to go further than that what if it's like okay we want to build a research outpost or we want to understand uh, you know all the let's say we find life on other uh, moons of saturn or jupiter in those sort of scenario, we want to make an outpost right there so can we do that flat out nope that's a big ass no. So mars and beyond needs more so like if you want to do mars reliably you definitely need something more now Chemical, does it work? Well, short answer, absolutely, it does work. But problem is, it's way too goddamn inefficient. So primary benefit of it, why the heck we utilize it, is that it has very high thrust. That simply means if you are in the deep gravitational well, for example, Earth, aka 9.8 meter per second squared minus, uh, that's a lot of oomph you need in order to get out of it. So chemical rocket can do that. Now, can you do that on Mars? Absolutely. Uh, Mars gives you a lot more option because it does not have the gravitational oomph. M moon, you have even more option. But uh, still, if you need a lot of GG amount of thrust, you have to utilize these things. But it does have high thrust at a cost of specific impulse. What does that mean? That simply means it does not have enough uh, in efficiency to basically you are throwing tons of material behind your back. That's what you are getting th uh, tons of thrust on upwards direction. That's also awesome. It's just like, how long can you get that? That's like in seconds. So basically, in rudimentary sense, you will always find out rocket engines are like they, they litter everything on fire. It's like, and psh, it's like very quickly it runs out uh, runs off the propellant very quickly because we are not very efficient with that now if you want to do anything uh, as far as mars like moon can be done on without refueling we have done that it's just that if you want to do it cost competitively you have to do it refueling in space and for mars there is no other way around it we need propellant depot in space in order to go to mars so we have to do that like that's why starship from day one they were like seriously thinking about refueling in space that's why like even the very early on like a bfr concept they had like side by side docking then they refined it like back to back docking you have to do this there is no alternative if you are serious about mars you have to do this and there is another aspect of it still too goddamn slow like uh, even if you can refuel a rocket it does not mean that you're gonna get like gg amounts of delta v sync because the exhaust velocity is not that high exhaust velocity most people are suggesting is like around 3.5 kilometer per second that's good but not that good. Now that's good enough for sending or curiosity, perseverance, voyagers, things of that nature. But sending human that will take too goddamn long. Moon we can do because it's like within a month, whole mission can be done. Mars, you're talking like one way trip that could take upwards of like, you know, a few months. That is unacceptable. And not to mention, even with refueling in space, it's only one way ticket. You have to refuel it on Mars or Mars orbit. So that is one thing you have to understand. Chemical does allow us to get us this far, but it cannot take us any further. Then let's understand ion engines. Now, ion engine utilizes uh, noble gases for propellant because you always need propellant. You have to throw something at back in order to get pushed forward. Action equals reaction. So you always need to throw something so that you cannot have inherently completely electrical rocket systems. In principle, in paper, on paper and all that jazz, you can do photonics rocket because that would be like you have giant light bulb and it's like radiating photons. It does have a uh, push, but it's not very, very, very weak. Like you have to keep the engine on for 10, 12 years where your speed will go up by a little bit so practically speaking we have to always throw something at back in order to get pushed forward so noble gases are taking that role here now 
they are noble gas inherently means they are not they, they are not carrying reactive energy basically it's not like okay uh, methane is here oxygen is here you're gonna uh, you know combine them and release a lot of chemical exothermic reaction that's not happening here it's noble by inherent design so we utilize electricity to pump energy into that and then uh, that energy would be very chaotic like when you have a combustion in a combustion chamber it's very useless so we utilize nozzle to give it a channel like we like okay you got the energy let's funnel it in such a way that it gives us the velocity that we require so here that role basically you got the propellant mass that is from your noble gas you want to put energy into that that you got from electricity now you want to funnel it basically you want to quote unquote nozzleify it so you will utilize magnetic field to like channel it in such a way that it's useful basically you're accelerating the ions and you're getting pushed forward now it does work it's a known technology it's a tested technology but this puppy has super duper low thrust what does that mean that simply means this puppy isn't mentioned in micronewtons basically i can give you the biggest ion thruster out there you can just hold your hand like this now i can definitely show uh, say that with confidence that you cannot do that with even cold gas thrusters cold gas thrusters will push you away and if you try to with raptor raptor is gonna whoosh, you so fundamentally speaking these puppies while they do work while they are tested technology in space they are idiotically low power uh, in terms of thrust basically how much oomph they can provide they are very useless however they do have very very high velocity so they can go upwards of 50, 40 kilometers per second some designs on paper are achieving upwards of 50 60 and they are like it's just like engineering we have to figure out how the heck we make sure the electrode don't erode away very quickly because these engines they have to keep working for very long basically instead rocket engine is like few seconds done go home few minutes at best case scenario these puppy they have to work for weeks years uh, continuously because of the low thrust so it will slowly couple the basically velocity into your rocket or your spacecraft it will take time and consequence of that not only you have to carry your propellant propellant is not providing you any energy you need external energy source you need solar panels and that's why nuclear power comes in because nuclear has very high energy density what does that mean that simply means you have a mass penalty it's like you cannot just make your power source as big and heavy as you want it there is a mass penalty of that so if you're uh, let's say you make a high density power source that's like say one ton that's good but if you got like something cheaper and let's say it's, uh, 50 tons your acceleration time will take much longer your acceleration time will go from okay one or two weeks to accelerate to like you know uh, three five years to accelerate so fundamentally we want to as light as possible the only way to achieve that is high density now second lowest thing that we can utilize is radio isotropic thermoelectric generator we have been using that for voyagers and curiosity rovers and all that jazz but they provide powers in watts basically 100 watt now ion engines that we are utilizing right now in space they are even though they have giant so solar arrays they were tested on lower orbit they were like you know 10 kilowatt of solar array the moment they went into let's say asteroid belt the solar output dropped to 1.4 kilowatt so you need kilowatts of power not watts of power you need kilowatts of power so fundamentally there is a factor of 10 missing so that is why nuclear power is seriously considered it has high enough density where yes your object will be heavy with all the control system and all that jazz it will be heavy but it will have enough oomph to justify it and it is 24 into 7 you do not have to be really like oh now i'm in the shadow i can't do anything like that which is a very serious concern with very uh, various amount of solar probes uh, basically almost all probes they have this issue it's like okay what if i go in the dark side and uh, study the clouds everything is awesome you can study in different wavelengths that are like glowing at night time but do you have the power to do that in if you are utilizing an rtg system awesome but if you are relying on solar panel good luck hope your battery is like very powerful so having 24 into 7 power source that's good and another aspect is throttleable what does that mean that simply means rtgs are like a fixed source outputs it of course they have a degradation but that's a fixed system no matter what you do it will you will not be able to affect the power output of it basically if it's giving you 500 watts of power that's it you are getting 500 watts you want more you can't do anything you want less you can't do anything now you'll be like why would i want to have less think of it this way let's say you have a deep space mission and you launched your probe now it's going to be coasting most of the time you do not want to put stress of that extra thermal load where it's not being used it's like okay i want to use the system i'm using my uh, laser communication system or radio communication that time you want to utilize the energy it's like it's not doing anything it's like idling you're like dude that's thermal stress that was a big issue with uh, curiosity and uh, all these modern rovers it's like they have a radiator on their heat shield that is uh, connected from the outside just to make sure that it does not cook the damn system from the inside 
so uh, you want the throttle regularities basically like you want to throttle it down as low as possible during the coasting phase and when it's like actually trying to observe you want to uh, go as high as possible like of course depending on your need if you like you have 10 instruments you don't need too much power you have 500 instrument yeah you need a lot of power so that's the whole point of throttleable power it's desirable and then right now even the basic design of the first thing that nasa has physically built i'm not talking about some paperwork or some concept physically built tested system not in space but tested system that starts at one kilowatt and can go upwards of 10 kilowatt so fundamentally it exceeds a point where it's like mass weight uh, you know uh, energy density all things line up to a point where we can utilize that today uh, nasa uh, kilowatt power system can be utilized today and some designs can go upwards of megawatts of power at that point even iron engines will have enough thrust that it can push some serious load at that point it's like yeah mars becomes something that you can do in like uh, weeks rather than years and uh, is there a limitation to this yes absolutely the biggest problem is that vacuum aka space is very hot i'm like what the hell every movie shows that uh, like you know space is cold i really hate those movies and like that's the thing like if you look at iss what will happen let's say something bad happens i hope never happens but like something bad happens and power failure happens the biggest headache for the people inside it would be heat stroke because they are coupled by vacuum vacuum is the perfect insulator you are surrounded by the best insulator this universe can provide the only way to dump the heat is through radiative cooling basically you need giant surface area and you need to heat them up in infrared so hope that you have enough photons that are leaving the system bringing the temperature down so you can understand that cooling the damn system is very very difficult like even look at the like this is a big system what about uh, something small as like a human uh, look at space shoot they have water running around to cool the goddamn astronaut because making a, a insulator that is good enough to stop overheating from one side that's easy that's like bro i got this no problem making sure the human does not uh, you know heat stroke that requires liquid water running around just to make sure that you don't uh, cook yourself so fundamentally heat is a very serious issue in space so if you have a nuclear reactor you have to find a way to dump that heat same way curiosity had to have a like external radiator in at its aeroshell where the aeroshell exterior system had the radiator otherwise it would have cooked everything inside over time of course it's like a, it's a fixed output so it's like 500 watt but if you're not radiating that 500 watt into space it will like 500 600 because last 100 did not dissipate it and then slowly it will be like 2000 5000 the trapped heat will go up 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 and you will cook everything so fundamentally that is the limiting factor you can design it like oh this is awesome this is gg system and it's like it's gonna have like five megawatts of power it's like do you have the radiator big enough to dump that heat in space efficiently enough that's another issue so that is a limiting factor and not to mention you will design uh, your reactor as small as possible a radiator inherently needs surface area inherently it cannot be made into a compact system so that is a limiting factor how big can we make it that's directly proportional to how cool um, like how much efficiently we can achieve cooling so what we can expect in the future well right now uh, nasa is seriously like actually looking into coupling this puppy as in like nasa's kilowatt reactor i specified this is an actual working nuclear reactor not this exact photo but like this is a system they have tested it built it and it has cleared all the system it does not utilize water does not require water and steam system it utilizes sterling engine and it utilizes sodium heat pipes benefit of that sodium is much more stable at much higher temperature aka it does not even turn liquid until 300 degrees celsius now if you have water in a pipe that is like you know heating up to let's say thousand degrees as it it has the tendency to go boom and if temperature goes too high it can become into like hydrogen and oxygen so basically rocket fuel and that's why like uh, many reactors like go boom simply because like water becomes uh, explosive so inherently people want to utilize something that is like more stable so sodium has been chosen and it inherently only works at like higher temperature so that's awesome and they have tested it. everything they could uh, test with this thing they have tested it with simulating malfunctions uh, failure uh, control rod failure all that jazz they have tested it this does work it can provide one kilowatt to 10 kilowatt and this has to be utilized for mars system so the first system is we, we got the power source they want to use it for space probe basically something like a, a voyager system but with a giant power supply and with iron engines of course so it can do much uh, missions of like same calibers as voyager caliber instead of taking 30 40 years it should be able to do that in few years that's the whole point like it will shrink the timeline so if we take 10 years to travel to pluto it could be shrunk down to like few years i'm talking like three or four now it depends on iron engine how efficient that is and like but there would be a side effect like uh, you know uh, if you're traveling ludicrously fast either you need to decel you have to do what we call prakrishta chrome burn is like accelerate accelerate decelerate decelerate or you have to do like accelerate as fast as possible and then once you are at pluto use chemical engines to slow down because they have much higher thrust 
so that was the first thing but the main thing you have to understand these sort of system requires in manufacture uh, basically in space manufacturing that's a core component for this because if you want to send a probe into space everybody's like green light you want to send a completely working nuclear reactor people are like nope primary reason it is a rocket inherently capable of going to space what does that mean that simply means it has the luxury of falling anywhere on the planet so that is one serious thing so how could you do that you can send a probe you can send the reactor but the, you do uh, send the fueling part of it basically the part that is a radioactive in a container that is designed to go boom and make sure that it does not uh, you know basically scatter that's the worst thing because you really don't want to scatter around the space it's like yeah i contaminated a whole continent you really don't want to do that so that way you can achieve that it's like you make as amazing probe as possible let's say a 22 ton probe that can be sent by uh, let's say falcon heavy then you built a system where you have like you know a reactor that is like big radiators and all that that is also 20 tons but the fuel that's like one ton but you have like 10 tons of shielding just to make sure that even if rocket goes boom no amount of scattering will happen even if rocket crash lands on earth no amount of would be scattered and then you dis discard it once you have fueled it then you discard the casing into orbit so that's the whole thing we have to build it in space and uh, one thing we have to understand that even though nuclear ion engine does allow us to achieve speeds that is flat out impossible with uh, chemical systems, it does have limitation when it comes to thrust, unless you're talking about Star Trek or things of that nature. So the only solution we have right now that would work is like utilizing chemical systems for uh, basically landing and launching. So if you have to land on Earth, you will utilize chemical systems or Earth's atmosphere for breaking. But if you have to do on Mars, you have to utilize chemical engines. On Moon, chemical engines. So all, in all these scenarios, we will utilize chemical engines to land and take off but to travel to make sure that travel time is very quick you will utilize uh, nuclear ion engines which is the weirdest part about the movie martian it's like they have uh, nuclear ion engines why the heck it's taking exactly the same amount of time that it will take you know in homing transfer method it's like, that was the weirdest thing it's like yeah it took years to travel i'm like what's the point of having nuclear ions it's like that's how we are sending curiosity right now it's like what's the point of you having that giant engine so that is one thing then this in principle should allow us to shrink the travel time from like earth to mars in months if a really powerful system has been utilized you can shrink it down in weeks and that's awesome that helps in from a radiation shielding point of view from how much supply and uh, sub, uh, you know extra stuff you need that also helps so fundamentally this is the future we have to do this especially for deep space missions we have to do this and nasa is already working like behind the behind the schedule they are working on this so this was my presentation on nuclear ion engines hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst a friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching